In Illinois, there's a chicken infected with a mysterious virus that goes unnoticed by the workers, so it still ends up being used to make nuggets. The infected food is sent to the local elementary school and Shelley soon takes a bite. Meanwhile aspiring novelist Clint has left New York and returned to his childhood home in Illinois. He's been working hard on a novel, but when he shows his mom she doesn't think it's good. Then Clint goes to his old elementary school, where he's taken a job as a substitute teacher. The security guard Rick thinks Clint is his dealer but lets him pass when he confirms his identity. Then Clint parks his car, only for gym teacher Wade to put his huge vehicle next to him, trapping him without a care. Clint has to climb over the back seat and leave through the trunk, noticing someone wrote dirty words on his nasty window. As he makes his way inside, he notices that this school has lots of wild children that misbehave and swear a lot. Clint meets with Vice Principal Sims, who makes him sit on a ball and takes Clint's phone, explaining the no-phone policy applies to both teachers and students. Next, Clint stops at the teacher's lounge, where he notices all the other educators are weird and awkward, so he has trouble communicating with them. Thankfully he finds Lucy, a childhood friend who also became a teacher. They're very happy to see each other again and start chatting and laughing, which makes Wade jealous because Lucy is his girlfriend. When Clint tells them his novel is about a man who buys a possessed boat, Wade immediately points out it sounds like a ripoff of Stephen King. At that moment each teacher goes to their corresponding classrooms. In Clint's, Patriot and Dink are making fun of Shelley because her face has a bunch of blisters, consequence of the nuggets. She doesn't react, she just stares ahead looking sick. Clint sends everyone back to their seats and writes his name on the board, only for Patriot to start mocking him. Patriot also reveals he still has his phone, and when Clint tries to take it, Patriot threatens to accuse Clint of doing naughty things to him. Realizing that Patriot was the one who wrote on his car, Clint decides to ignore him for now and makes Calvin read his novel draft to the class. While everyone is distracted, Patriot goes back to mocking Shelley. However when he pulls her pigtail, he rips it off together with some skin. A furious Shelley jumps on Patriot and bites his face, so Clint has to come closer to break the fight. Shelley immediately scratches him and runs away, then Clint takes Patriot to the nurse's office. Meanwhile outside, Rick finally gets in contact with his dealer and hides in his van to eat some mushrooms. Moments later during recess, Clint shares what happened with Lucy, who laughs at the story and makes Wade more jealous. In the playground, Dink approaches Shelley to insult her for hurting Patriot, only for Shelley to attack him too. Soon Patriot starts changing too and runs through the playground, spreading the infected blood to make the other kids change as well. When a teacher comes to check on them, the now zombified children jump on him and start eating him. A second teacher tries to help but she's overpowered and eaten as well. Nearby, Wade is playing with a ball while ranting about Clint's bond with Lucy, so he doesn't notice anything. From his van, Rick does see the carnage and isn't sure if it's real or a hallucination caused by the mushrooms. He still uses his radio to warn Sims, who immediately comes out and tries scolding the children for getting violent. However the kids just jump on him and eat him too. Inside, Patriot finally transforms too and rushes to the principal's office. Meanwhile at the teacher's lounge, the adults see what's happening and start panicking. A teacher even presses her emergency button. At that moment Wade finally turns around and notices the infected children, so he tries to communicate with them. Obviously the kids don't take him seriously, so Wade starts running and knocks down any child that tries to stop him as if it was a football game. He manages to get back into the building and locks the door, leaving all the children outside. The teachers try to use the phone to call 911, but Patriot has found all the cables in the principal's office and destroyed the phone lines. Wade joins the others in the lounge and they watch the kids pound on the windows, hungry for more human flesh. At that moment the sheriff arrives, and Rick swallows the rest of the mushrooms in fear of getting arrested. However as soon as the sheriff gets closer the children bite his fingers through the fence. Horrified, the sheriff gets back in his car and drives away, only for a kid to come out of hiding in the back seat and attack him, making him crash. Back in the lounge, Wade decides they need to do something, but when he opens the door Patriot jumps into the room. Wade pushes him away and Patriot tackles Clint, so a teacher uses the chance to throw pepper spray at him. Patriot just moves to attack a different teacher, and the sudden push causes them to end up stuck in the closet. The other adults use the opportunity to run away. One of the teachers tries to leave through a back door, but the kids are waiting there too and kill him. The group runs to the library, where they find Calvin. At first they panic but soon they realize he isn't infected because he's been hidden in the library reading all morning. In the meantime, Patriot opens the doors for the rest of the zombies to get inside. Wade guides the group to the upper floors and they manage to hide in the music classroom, closing the door right before Shelley can reach them. She keeps her face against the glass and Calvin says that all the children have cooties. Health education teacher Doug thinks he may be onto something and tries to take a closer look at Shelley's blisters through the glass, but she runs away. Then Wade suggests that they should run outside to reach their cars and defend themselves with the instruments. Clint disagrees and thinks they should go to the principal's office to get their phones and call for help. While the two men argue like children, Patriot starts breaking all the cell phones one by one. Lucy finally gets tired of the fight and proposes to wait until the parents come to pick up their kids, which everyone agrees to. 
Outside, Rick stays safe in his van and watches the massacre get worse by the second. He turns on the radio to cover the noises of death and even hallucinates a giraffe next to him. Unfortunately the music is cut off by an emergency broadcast, it turns out kids all over the city are transforming and attacking their parents. While they wait, Lucy notices Clint's scratch from Shelley. Fearing that Clint may be infected, Wade immediately locks him up in the adjacent room. Doug is desperate for answers, so he follows Clint and makes a very thorough examination that leaves his hands covered in body fluids. Then Doug informs the rest of the group that Clint does have symptoms, but it's something similar to the flu and not what the kids have. Hours pass and the kids entertain themselves with the body parts of their victims. When it's finally 3 o'clock, the teachers release Clint and go together to the roof to wait for the parents. However when a mother finally arrives, she has earphones on and is in the middle of a call, so she doesn't hear the teachers and Calvin yelling for help. Her child soon gets in the car and proceeds to eat the baby in the back seat while the mother just keeps on chatting. She doesn't react until the kid turns to eat her as well. At that moment a teacher's leg gets grabbed by Tamara and everyone panics, but it turns out she isn't infected and joins the group. The other kids finally hear them and start climbing the wall, so the group gets back inside and runs to hide in a stage room. Wade pushes the door to keep the kids out but Dink manages to sneak in and grabs Doug, so Wade takes a fire extinguisher and beats him up to death. Lucy tries to keep the two healthy kids distracted from the violence and Doug takes a closer look at the body, discovering the blood is black. He drags Dink into the bathroom and starts dissecting him while Tamara discovers she was scratched, so Lucy sends her to wash the wound. Then she approaches Wade to discuss his jealousy. Wade had been planning to propose to Lucy, however he started to have doubts when he saw her with Clint because she never smiled like that for Wade. He insults her and asks to be left alone. Minutes later, Doug finishes his dissection and shares his conclusions while showing off the kid's brain. Most of the cells are dead and decomposing, so the children can only do basic things like jump and eat but nothing else, meaning they aren't really human anymore. He's sure that this is caused by a virus, and when Lucy points out that Clint and Tamara didn't get infected, Doug asks Tamara if she got her monthlies and wears a bra. Tamara says yes, which confirms Doug's theory, the virus only affects those who haven't gone through puberty. Suddenly, Patriot turns off all the lights and triggers an alarm. As the teachers panic, they notice that Calvin is unconscious. It turns out he has diabetes and needs to eat something as soon as possible. At that moment they hear noises through the walls and worry that the children may be getting closer. Someone starts shaking the door and in a moment of fear, Lucy admits she can't marry Wade. The door then opens, but it's just the janitor. Unfortunately the kids soon break in as well, so the group starts running again and the janitor guides them to hide in the boiler room. He doesn't have any food, but he has a radio and they learn that the city is evacuating, meaning nobody will come to help them. As everyone loses hope, Clint comes up with a plan, using the ducks, they could reach the teacher's room to get some food for Calvin and Wade's truck keys. The only adult small enough to get through the ducks is Clint, and before he leaves Tamara gives him the cootie shot. He takes the janitor's walkie-talkie with him, and as he moves, he keeps getting messages from Wade insulting him. This childish behavior causes the usually nice Lucy to snap and she angrily shouts at everyone, saying she wants to achieve something before dying. Then she says she hates every teacher and gets in the ducks too to help Clint. As the duo crawls through the ducks, they see a child in a corridor, so they freeze to avoid detection. The kid still hears something and takes a closer look, but thankfully it's too dark to see anything and the child goes back to playing. Eventually they make it to the lounge and Clint tries using the vending machine, but it won't take his dollar. Lucy finds Wade's keys and gets back in the ducks to quickly reach the principal's office. She tries getting a good phone but they're all broken, so she returns to the ducks without noticing that Patriot saw her. At that moment the kid from the corridor enters the lounge and Clint hides behind the vending machine. Unfortunately the machine suddenly decides to work and makes noise, causing the child to start screaming. Patriot hears this and starts making his way to the lounge, but thankfully Clint manages to finally push his dollar in and get a snack from the machine before jumping back into the ducks. Lucy and Clint crawl as fast as possible, but soon Patriot starts following them along with more kids, so Clint throws the snack into the boiling room before taking a new path. The duo makes it to a different room and immediately moves some furniture to block the ducks so the children can't follow them. Then they look around and find the body of another teacher behind her desk. Suddenly they hear the kids moving away and realize they're going to the lounge, so they warn the group through the walkie-talkie. The teachers immediately throw a bunch of things into the ducks to create a barricade, then they strap the lid to keep it closed. One of the teachers still panics, so Doug has to slap him. Back to Clint, he comforts Lucy when she finally has a breakdown. Then he makes a confession, he came back to Illinois to see her and he already knew she worked that school, he only pretended to be surprised to see her. He had been teaching first grade in New York for two years and became depressed because he couldn't start a career as a writer since teaching doesn't give them much free time. They laugh at the absurdity of the situation and suddenly kiss, but break it off when they remember Wade. At that moment Clint gets an idea and starts searching the room for the medicine they use to keep kids calm. Meanwhile Wade calls Lucy on the walkie-talkie and apologizes for his behavior, admitting he was jealous because he felt inferior to some fancy writer from New York. 
Feeling guilty, Clint takes over the walkie-talkie and admits he's a loser, giving his blessing to Wade's and Lucy's relationship. Then both groups agree on a plan, and their walkie-talkie signals are picked up by Rick's van radio. Lucy and Clint open the door enough to throw the medicine at the kids, who immediately take it. Meanwhile Wade offers an empowering speech and the group uses any object they can find around to put together some rough weapons and protection. Once the kids have fallen asleep, both groups come out and reunite in a hallway. As they make their way through the dark with a few flashlights, some awake kids try to get them, but they bring them down by shooting baseballs at them. After a bunch of perfectly shot attacks, Wade runs out of balls, so the janitor stays behind to fight with his amazing martial arts skills while the group runs outside. The front yard is full of creepy children, so the group starts hitting them with a variety of sport gear and instruments to make their way to Wade's vehicle. The fight is fierce but their teamwork is stronger, and after a few close calls they reach the truck. Unfortunately Wade is stuck with the horde, so he throws his keys at Clint and tells him to protect Lucy, then he continues to fight the kids so the others can escape. Lucy doesn't want to leave him, but Clint drags her into the vehicle. As they drive away, they don't notice that Patriot has climbed on top of the truck. When Clint notices that they're almost out of gas, Patriot reaches through the window and tries to kill Clint, causing him to slam the brakes and throw the kid on the road. Hungry for revenge, Clint doesn't hesitate to drive toward Patriot and crush him against a tree. Eventually the group reaches Danville and the truck finally runs out of gas. The town is empty and there are plenty of bodies on the streets. When the group checks the windows at a shop, they learn that the virus has already spread all over the country and it's been tracked to a chicken factory in Illinois. Doug says he might be able to make a vaccine if he can put his hands on a nugget. At that moment a bunch of zombie kids appear behind them, so the group runs inside the nearest building which turns out to be a children's playground. After locking the doors, they notice an abandoned party and Doug gets to salvage a nugget. There are also the bodies of the employees on the floor. They move into another room and suddenly a light comes on to reveal a whole horde of monster children waiting for them inside the climbing game. The group is about to lose hope but to their shock a few kids fall dead, they were killed by Wade and the janitor, who managed to escape. Wade tells everyone to run outside, where Rick is waiting in the van. On their way out, the group blocks the game with a giant ball to trap the kids. Then Wade sprays gasoline all over the place and throws a match to start a fire, leaving all the zombies to burn down while he escapes in the van with his co-workers. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.